Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 2, Configuring Physical Connectivity, Chapter 7, Connecting Fiber Channel and FCOE. In previous chapters, we talked about how ACI requires a logical and physical network configuration to provide endpoint connectivity across the fabric, and that we may reuse the same objects such as AEPs, domains, and VLAN pools for multiple connections. We have mainly focused on LAN connections so far, but what about storage protocols? Are they supported on ACI? And the answer is absolutely. ACI may run native fiber channel connections leveraging different speeds on Nexus 9000 FX switches as well as other models that support unified ports. All you have to do is change the behavior of a port from Ethernet to fiber channel and insert the right SFP. ACI may also leverage 10, 40, 100, and 400 gig Ethernet ports to run other storage protocols like FCOE, NFS, iSCSI, and SMB to name a few. All you would need to do in this case is adjust ACI QoS and lossless Ethernet capabilities accordingly. The benefits of consolidating LAN and SAN traffic in the same network or top of rack device is not only a reduction of cabling and devices to manage, but also the visibility, performance, and security that both ACI and Nexus dashboard can provide. It is important to mention that if you're running IP storage traffic, you don't require any special licensing on your Nexus switches. However, if you're planning to run FCOE or FC, you will need to consider a storage protocols license on the leaf nodes that need it. In this chapter, we will focus on the configuration steps to successfully implement FCOE and native fiber channel on ACI. As of ACI 5.2, both protocols are implemented running in import virtualization mode, also known as MPV. What MPV mode means is that when you connect a server or initiator to your ACI leaf, the fabric logging process, also known as Floggy, which sends the initiator's worldwide name, will be forwarded to a fiber channel switch or director, such as an MDS, Nexus 9K running NXOS, or Brocade switch. It is important to mention that fiber channel and fiber channel over Ethernet is not VXLAN encapsulated. Therefore, it is not sent to the spine layer but directly to the fiber channel or FCOE director. Then, such director would receive the floggy and send a fiber channel ID back to the initiator through the MPV switch, in this case, the Nexus 9K leaf node. The important thing here is that zoning, which allows initiators to talk to targets, must be defined in the external fiber channel director, since ACI does not support zoning as of version 5.2. Full fiber channel forwarding functionality and zoning on ACI will be available in a future release, so stay tuned. Today, I will show you how to connect a VMware server running FCOE through a CNA to its fiber channel storage array, in our case, a pure storage. Keep in mind that you could also run end-to-end -end fiber channel from an HBA or FCOE if you wanted to. In our scenario, we will be configuring a mixture of fiber channel and FCOE on ACI to show both protocols and zoning will be defined on a couple of MDS switches where my storage array is connected. Since we will need fiber channel uplinks to connect from our ACI leaf nodes on port 117 to the MDS switches on port 135, we must make sure that we have a switch model that supports unified ports, such as Nexus 9000 FX switches. Another important consideration is that when we perform port conversions from Ethernet to fiber channel, we have to do it in contiguous groups of four. For example, one through four, five through eight, and so on. In our case, we need port 117. Therefore, I'll have to convert port 17 through 20 to fiber channel. You can do such task either through the CLI or the GUI. And after you do it, you will need to reload the switches. Let's go to our APIC, and as you can see, we currently have all ports in both leaf nodes operating in Ethernet mode. I will now convert port 117 on leaf 201 and its contiguous ports to fiber channel by using the CLI. I will SSH into my APIC 
and under configuration mode, I will type the leaf ID, then slot one, since this is a fixed switch, and then the port range I want to convert, which in our case is port 17 through 20. I will then reload the switch and do the same for leaf 202, wait a few minutes, and once they finish rebooting, let's go back to the fabric inventory section and take a look at both switches, where you can now see ports 17 through 20 operating in fiber channel mode. To perform the physical network configuration, we will follow the same golden questions we have learned throughout this module. And then, in module 3, we will continue this configuration through the logical network. It is important to mention that you will not see MPP floggies on ACI, nor fiber channel interfaces come up until you finalize the logical network configuration. Let's start configuring our scenario by focusing on the fiber channel side first, connecting our leaf nodes to the MDS switches. The first question is, what do I want to connect to ACI? And the answer is, I want to connect my MDSA and MDSB fiber channel switches. Therefore, I will create a fiber channel domain for both of them. The second question is, do I need VLANs or vSANs for such connections? And I do. I will use vSAN 101 for my MDSA connection and vSAN 201 for MDSB. So, I will create a vSAN pool including them. As you know, the third step would be to create an AEP and add our fiber channel domain from step one, which already includes the vSAN pool. Let's go ahead and do this now on APIC. First, we'll click on Fabric, Access Policies, and in the Physical and External Domain section, we will create a fiber channel domain. I will add a name to it, and we're done with step one. On the same window, I will do step two, creating a vSAN pool, which will include both vSAN 101 and vSAN 201. In this case, I am creating a single domain with both vSANs in it to keep it simple, but you could always create separate ones if you'd like. Last, I will go to Policies, Global, and create an AEP. I will call it SAN Uplinks, since I will later use it to assign it to my fiber channel interfaces facing both MDS switches. I'll associate it with my fiber channel domain, and we're done with steps one, two, and three. Now, moving to step four, we need to specify which interface we want to configure and how. Therefore, I will create a SAN interface profile following our naming convention best practices, and we will include our fiber channel port 117. We will also create a fiber channel policy group where we will include a set of fiber channel policies such as the port mode. In this case, we will set it to MP since the leaf node is working in MPB mode. We'll also set the speed to eight gig and enable trunking. Finally, and most importantly, we will add our AEP from step three to this fiber channel policy group. Lastly, in step five, I will associate our SAN interface profile to a SAN switch profile we will also create. Just for your reference, keep in mind that for this to work, the MDS or fiber channel switches you use should have NPIV enabled as well as F port channel trunk if you're using multiple vSANs. At the interface level, the port type on the MDS switch should be F and the fill pattern should be set to idle. If we perform a show interface on the MDS interface connecting to my ACI leaf node, in this case FC135, we can see it is currently down as expected. Let's go ahead and finish our physical network configuration then. I'll start by creating a fiber channel policy group. I will call it fiber channel uplinks 8 gig. And then I will create a fiber channel policy inside it, setting the port to NP, trunk mode on and the speed at 8 gigs. Once I'm done, and most importantly, I will select the AEP I created in step three. Then I will simply use the quick start wizard since I need to create new SAN switch and interface profiles anyway, and I will start with leaf 201 first. Selecting interface 117, which should already be in fiber channel mode, the switch and interface profile names based on the best practices we covered, and then I will select fiber channel. I will now select the fiber channel policy group that I created before, and we're done. In the interest of time, 
I will not show you how to do leaf toe two in this video. However, you would follow exactly the same process. If we now go to the inventory, we can see interface fiber channel 117 is still down on both leaves. This is expected and they will not go up until we finish the logical network configuration in module three, since we will need to allow a vSEN to flow on a specific port through an EPG mapping. We are done with the SAN uplink ports running fiber channel. So please join me in part two of this chapter where we will now perform the physical network configuration for the server site running FCOE.